Calvin Klein revolutionized fragrance in 1985 with, with one that can only be described as pure obsession. Joining us is Hal Rubenstein to tell us more about how the fragrance ended up in his latest book, The Looks of Love, 50 Moments in Fashion That Inspired Romance. Hal, welcome to Ultimate Report. Hi. Hi, Mary. Thank you for joining us. Yes, so what inspired the inclusion of Calvin Klein's fragrance, Obsession, <laughs> into your book? Very simple. An ad campaign like no other. Look, whenever we think of perfume, I'm not, I'm not saying sensuality never fills in, you know, it figures into perfume. Remember, when I was younger, my grandmother used to wear some perfume called Taboo. Mm -hmm. T-A-B-U. You know, it was a picture of a, of a man, like, you know, I think it was like either somebody was dropping a violin and grabbing the woman in an embrace. You know, but she was she was in sort of you know pre Raphaelite dress or something like that. But when you think of perfume, most perfumes, and 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 even and even and even today, you know, simple pleasures and you know Gwyneth is running through a field of flowers, or you know, uh, 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 there's there's Natalie Portman standing on the deck of Paris, or there's there's what's her name, Charlize Theron is is climbing up some ladder all dressed in gold to overlook the top of the city. But there's still this this idea of of great beauty. There's this idea of 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 of, of flowers, of simplicity, of of just gentle love, of romance, of of being able to entrance somebody with the aroma of a perfume. And then I will read you what Calvin said. Okay. In the 1980s, everyone was just insane about sex recalls Calvin Klein. It's all my friends and I thought about, not about falling in love, sex. There you go. And there like, you go. Then again, if you were in Calvin's circle, it was kind of hard not to think about sex. Um, this was a man, it's very funny, here's a man who when it came to fashion, it was all about minimalism, it was all about clean lines, a sort of stark, almost stoic sense of fashion. Uh, almost, I wouldn't say monastic, you know, I, I think the line may now look more so like that way, but it was always about, uh, 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 about clean going forward, um, streamlining, it wasn't about curves, it wasn't a plunging neckline, but when it came to marketing product, this man took a 15-year-old girl named Brooke Shields, put a, put a pair of jeans on her, and said, okay, the only thing that comes between me and my Calvins is? Nothing. 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 Calvin knew the way you sell product, past, present, and future, is sex. Yeah. He wanted, and actually, but he wanted a perfume that smelled like sex. He wanted a perfume that had that essence of the, the odor of a body of them, not musk. Remember, no one really smells like musk. Right. But that, that, but that, that idea of just getting under those covers and having it out. Okay. There you go. And oddly, and so, and so what he did, and if you look at you look at the ads, they're all done. It's a tangle of bodies. You know, he was fascinated by one woman, Josie Bahrain. Mm -hmm. who he was obsessed with, and one of a beautiful woman, but if you remember her, also an incredibly androgynous creature. Yeah, she was. Looked masculine, feminine, and then if you look at you, you look at the ads for it, the original ads. It's you couldn't. See, you it was all shot in sort of a blue haze once again by Bruce Weber, who who basically Bruce was the go-to man for. Oddly enough, this shows you the level of his talent. The go-to man for both Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren opposite polar opposites of how we see of how we see fashion and style but a man who understood both people intrinsically to spearhead two completely different completely different campaigns okay but 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 for calvin it's we're going to do the whole thing in sepia and flesh tones and seem almost as if you're like a screen of gauze and there's going to be limbs and bodies and you can't really connect it to anybody else and you're not sure who's Who's, who's piled on top of who? You just see an awful lot of really good skin, okay? And then there were those ads. There were those TV ads, if you remember. Again, most people on, on, on your side are too young. But it was this shot. It was somebody reciting something from F. Scott, from F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yeah. 
Yeah, or Ernest Hemingway. And if you're too young to know who that is, then you really should go look them up. But they're, they were great Ameri writers of American literature. But it was some kind of ridiculous, you know, basically expository remark ab about love or passion that meant nothing to anybody. And there the girl went running across and everybody was unattainable, but everybody was on the make. And at the end, he looks and searches for her and goes, ah, oh, the smell of it. Yeah. And, and basically, like Calvin said, I really think it smelled like sex. And domestic sales for, for, for obsession within the first year were $30 million. Wow. And what it, it not only... And I think it helped define every subsequent subsequent campaign. I mean, Eternity may be the most austere of all of all the others, but when you look at his ads for jeans, remember his look at his ads for jeans with Mark, you know, with with Marky Mark. Actually, even prior to Obsession, one of the the, the home, one of the great photos of, of of all time. Once again, Bruce Weber when he was introducing his under underwear. Remember, yeah. how the money comes from underwear and and perfume. What did he do? He shot a man. He, he, he shot Bruce Hitness, who was, who was uh, an Olympic pole vaulter, against the gorgeous Santorinian sky and a white wall and a pair of briefs with just enough of a bulge, enough of a definition, so that you knew exactly where the right parts were. Shot it against the sky. They put this poster up. They put this billboard up in Times Square, and there were automobile accidents. Okay, there was not, within a week of it being posted on bus shelters in New York, there wasn't one left. They were all stolen, they were all gone. And Calvin to this day is basically, you think of Calvin Klein, you think of underwear. Yeah. Marky Mark, Kate Moss, the, you know, the, C, the CK1 campaign, everything came from, from, from this, this, this concept, not unlike, very much, he, he was really his brothers under the skin with Versace. That, that sex is not just what sells, sex is what propels. You know, we like to talk about so many other elements in fashion and we don't wanna, I'm not debasing anything or taking anything away from anyone else's design, design ethics and concept, but it really is, it is about the laws of attraction. It is about, yes, we can talk about moon and June and spoon, but the first thing you have to do is turn somebody on. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. You have to create an interest. Exactly. So everybody from the Housewives to fashion designers love Calvin Klein. I mean, he was everybody's he was everybody's chosen it boy, so to speak, or it man. So what made him so popular that everybody from so many different facets of life, I mean, even I mean, hardcore conservatives, and you know, I know that from you know growing up in the eighties. As Diane von Furstenberg says, quote in the book, everyone was in love with Calvin. Um, Calvin looked like the man who wore Calvin Klein clothes. Calvin was beautiful. Calvin was an incredibly handsome young man. Besides being incredibly talented and gifted at a very young age, Calvin was, remember, in fact, Calvin actually was featured in one of his own, in, in one of his own ad campaigns. Bruce, Bruce Weber shot him at Georgia O'Keeffe's house and a whole line for, for Calvin Klein Sportswear, and he used Calvin because unlike a lot of other designers, he really was, he really was that gorgeous. He really was that beautiful. And he also, he became part of a certain life in the 70s. When you, when you, and you think, or your 70s, early 80s, when you think of Calvin and you think of Halston, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry for that, but Calvin and Halston and Liza, it was, it was that whole desirable world that, um, that, that it's, it's too late to call it jet set, but it, it, it was it was that whole that disco era that that glamour world that 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 world that you wanted to be that everyone wanted to be, wanted to be part of, you know. If 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 it was a club in New York, there was Calvin. If it, if it was on a beach in Fire Island, there was Calvin. You know. If it was at the Oscars, there was Calvin. Um, he became part of the world that he designed for. I think that's something that's very key. That that you know when you look at a lot of the designers that nowadays we take it as commonplace. You know, when, 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 when someone, you know, like, like Hedy Slaman or uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, Olivier, uh, Olivier Roustang, uh, basically sort of they have, you know, Alexander Wang, they're one of the cool, they're, they're, they, they, they are their own cool kid. They are their own right. bad dad. But this wasn't then. You know, Bill Blass didn't have that kind of profile. You no, know, he didn't. Like, oh, Jeffrey Bean didn't have that kind no. of profile. 
you know, Molly Parnas, you know, think of any of them. None of them had this. Calvin was, Calvin was the beauty that you were designing for. Right. You know, Kelly, his, you know, who became his wife. Kelly was the beauty he was designing for. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and so I, I think he, he sort of created his own ideal in the same way that Ralph created his own ideal for his world. Wow, that's beautiful. So how, where can we purchase our copy of The Looks of Love, 50 Moments in Fashion That Inspired Romance? Either if your local bookstore doesn't have it, bug them because they can just punch up a couple of buttons and get it. Or if not, it's on Amazon, naturally. It's a, you can get it for your Kindle, though I prefer you get the book. It's on hsn.com where the Hal Rubenstein collection is. Yes, it is and it's a great collection, I want to add. It's absolutely, it's well put together. It is beautifully put together at an incredible price. Incredible price, incredible workmanship. <laughs> And um, it's uh, on barnesandnoble.com or wherever books are sold. <laughs> and where can we catch up with Hal Rubenstein online? Oh, gosh. Uh, HalRubenstein.com. I'm on, I'm on, on Facebook. Uh, it, it's easy on, on the fan page. It's easy to sort of get right there. I'm on, I am on Twitter at how to r. I am on Instagram at Hal Rubenstein. I am at Gabriel New York. I am on The Ultimate Report. Uh, I am blogging for Gabriel New York. I am on Architectural Digest's website as a special projects editor. Where the heck else am I? That's enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Now that now that we're reeling, this is great. Yeah. Um, Hal, thanks so much for joining us. It you is bet. great to have you visit with us always. Thank you so much. All right, catch up with me on my blog, www.beautybeautereport.com, on Twitter at Beauty Publicist. On YouTube, Ultimate Report. Everyone, thanks so much for joining us. Have a beautiful and successful week. Mwah.